So on May 18th, 2014, I uploaded one of my most popular videos. It was called Who Said It's Over? And it was a Search and Destroy video, uh, video of Search and Destroy on Warhawk. Uh, it was the finals of a tournament, and we were playing in this tournament, and we started to choke a little bit. Um, it was round 11, and I clutched up. You guys all know the clip, but here it is anyway. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm stunned. Fuck. All right, we need to push up. Down. Yeah. Down, yeah. Hey, Grandma. Watching zigzag. Give me a second, Grandma. You're running out of time. No, oh, zigzag. One million shots. Zigzag. Ah. Oh. Fuck. Oh, great, 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 great. Fan. Oh shit. <gasps> stay up, stay up, stay up. Yeah, one, one v one, one v one. Let's go! Let's go! Yo! So what a lot of people don't know about that clip is there's actually an insane backstory to that whole video and why that was very limited con there was very limited content with me on that team. You see, I was dropped from that team uh, the next morning. That was our last game of that night and the next morning I was dropped from that team. So what happened and why was that team so toxic and why did that team not last so long? We're going to analyze that right here, right now. So right off the rip, um, the quick backstory to this is the team is me, Zorks, or Gino, as you guys know, Team Monkey, or Tyler, as you guys know him, and a guy named Snaking. So Snaking is not in many of my videos. Uh, I think this, I think it's maybe one other video. If not, this might not actually be the only video with him on my channel. Um, so him and I had known each other before we teamed together. We had a very contentious relationship. We didn't really get along. And we kind of picked him up because we needed a fourth because Nick was unavailable. We hadn't found Quan yet. And uh, Ace and X was, had just recently been dropped. Uh, and we needed a fourth for this tournament. So this was also in the heat of my rivalry with Ace and X, just to kind of put it in a timeline for you guys. So... Um, the problem with snaking, and I, I also real quick, before I go any further, again, this is six years ago. There's no animosity. I'm literally just analyzing what happened, why I got dropped after one of the best plays of my career. And yeah. So the problem with snaking was that he was a captain of his own team called real and him and I, neither of us wanted to give up captainship. I wanted to be under the cryptic organization and he wanted to be under his own organization called real uh so that was a point of contention for having him join the team as a permanent member so you know i, t I talked to gino and i talked to t uh, tyler and i was like hey why don't we just team with him for this tournament we'll see how this tournament goes well <laughs> the problem was is that this video is the final game of the tournament it is the set the finals it's the finals of the tournament, and this is game five. So no matter what, this is the last game of the tournament. But we did really well up to this point. Um, so more background information was I played very well in this tournament up until the semifinals. The semifinals, I had a completely horrible series. And I did absolutely terrible. And I think we I think we ended up winning that series three to one. No, we won it three to two because uh, we. I made a really terrible call last map, um, search and destroy, and it almost cost us the game. It almost cost us the tournament. So game one is strike zone domination. One of our weaker maps, we actually ended up doing really well, and we ended up winning that game. Uh, game two, I made a really poor call again in round eleven. This was on freights S and D, and I still remember. I called the optic rush on red and we got smoked and died and lost that game and they were all pissed so at this point you know there's there's a little bit of distrust between myself and snaking because this is his first time really seeing me in tough situations and i'm not making the right calls and i will own that i definitely did not make the right calls um so we go to round three. We go to map three, which is blitz. If you guys remember how it worked, it was Dom search blitz Dom search. So we go to map three. We know we're gonna win this blitz. We never drop. I think in our, my entire 
Ghost's career, we probably only dropped two or three Blitz maps. I was really good at Blitz. I was a really good Blitz player. We won that with ease. It wasn't cl wasn't even close. I think we won it like 20 to 2 or something like that. And it was incredible. It was a great win. Then we're on Octane Search and Destroy. And I'm calling plays, and we're not executing. And I don't think I necessarily called the wrong plays, but I was dropping horrible numbers. I think I was like 9 and 21 at one point. I was not playing well. And... Um, it was causing a lot of frustration. I was not playing well. My The whole team was not playing well, but I was playing extremely poorly. Um, usually when, when one of us played well, I would or played poorly, I would step up, but I wasn't doing that that game. Um, so, you know, again, Snaking and I already have a contentious history that I've made two bad play calls in this tournament. He doesn't like the play calls I'm making on Octane. And we started to push back a little bit, you know. We started to have a little bit of a comeback, and he might have been making some better calls than me, so we just started kind of listening to him. But I'm the search and destroy king of this team. I always made the strats. You guys will see in my search and destroy videos, I may not have always dropped good numbers, but I always had the strategies. I always called the plays, and the games that we won were the games that I called the best plays. So I was, I was a really good play caller, and I was a really good strat developer. And I watched a lot of gameplay, and that was how I developed a lot of these strats. Well, at this point, Snaking doesn't trust me, and neither, at, um, for good reason, neither do Gino and Tyler. And so, without further ado, we're going to get into some of the points of contention. I do want to say, if you guys aren't familiar with this video, I messed up the recording back then, and uh, you won't be able to hear my audio. Um, you can kind of hear me echo sometimes throughout the video under or from other people's mics but for the most part you can't really hear me so the big issue with this game the big reason that we were at this point was we we had been undermining each other the whole time i would make a call he would make a call and then it would split the team because we didn't they didn't know who to go with gino being who he was was very loyal to me and was listening to my play call tyler being who he was and being stubborn was listening to snaking which again <laughs> no bitterness in this video literally just saying what happened and i was also being a stubborn little asshole too because you know i should have kind of conceded calling the plays for a little bit since given that i had made two really bad play calls that cost us two games okay so um yeah so here we are in round six and you're going to hear Snaking say, do the same thing, split the push. That was him trying to make it seem like we were getting along and seem like we were on the same page. But really, he knew that I wanted to do an A push here. He wanted to do a B push. He was, Him and I were both sprinting for bomb. And you'll see he bumps me and, and gets bomb. So he takes bomb over to B. So this is round six of the game. We almost go down four to two. You'll see what happens. Fucking, like, execute, too. Search and destroy. Do the same thing, split the bomb. And destroy. Do the same thing, split the bomb again to to go by to go B. Destroy the objective. Ordnance acquired. I'll go B. I'll go B. Uh, I'll go with him. Mocking blue tarp, dude. Sick. Yo, one. Holy, Holy shit. shit. I gotta push over back to A. Fuck. I might get a pick over here. Nice. God, I got knifed! Got him. Unbelievable, dude. Just fight for the kills. Yeah, I know. Oh, shit. Fucking back away from that shit. Oh. Good plays. 1-1. One, one. I'll go top 18 and go... And go yeah, right. that's what I was just about to do. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop down. Gotta go. Yeah. Oh, hey! Let's go! So Gino clutches up, and they keep saying 1v4, but it was a 1v3. He got the ace that round, but it was a 1v3. He was left in a 1v3. So Gino clutches up and saves us from going down 4-2. to two. So here, I really start getting angry, and I actually... You can't hear me, but... and. They kind of all just ignore me, but I'm like, guys, what the fuck are we doing? We need to start listening to me. 
again, I'm cocky. I'm thinking I'm making the better play calls. And I ultimately, I think we should have gone A there, not just because that was my play call, but because you see how quickly we got pushed over at B. Um, so then round seven comes. So now we're going to go into round seven. The round seven is really where this game takes a turning point. So, yes, it's tied three to three. And, yes, the clutch doesn't come till round 11. So that means there's still five more rounds, and we, that means we still have to drop two more. But the problem is, after my death, and I'm going to spe specify that after my death, I start to get really frustrated with the fact that my team is not listening to me and I feel like I've lost control of the team. So I start making dumb plays in round eight and round nine. So we're going to look at round seven, and then I'm going to take you through the plays that I made in round eight and round nine. <laughs> I can't wait for Scott that shit. I'm going B again. Yo. Oh, I just turned on my game sound on accident. Hey, don't stand there, Mike. Don't stand there. Dan is right in the shot. <clears throat> Watch the blue tarp. Uh, they, they gotta be going B, dude. Yeah, they, they, they smoked it. Sounded. Whoa! He's going um, gate, 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 gate. No, he's, he is gate, dude. He's laying down towards the gate. The bomb's down. They're panning it right now. Nade the bomb, shoot out, and do everything again. I nade his bomb. Oh, look at the bomb right now. Look at the bomb right now. Pre aim. Damn. Look to your right, right here, Bucky. Another one, another one was loading, pre loading. Oh, under, under, you saw him under the truck, under the truck, under the truck. I went loading. He's gonna be now. in the corner. We're gonna head to try here. Uh, oh, well, that was a hard shot, dude. Yeah, we, oh, we can still do this. And then right here, dude, you guys will see, hard. I switched to snaking. Yeah. And you watch. So it's just, this is a 2v1, oh. or 2v2, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, it was 2v3, okay. Uh. So it's a 2v3. Oh, last one's American? American. They, they both. Get kills. They're in a pinch position here, and he lets him die because he wanted to go for the knife. Yes, he only had four bullets. He should have reloaded, and instead of going for the wasting time going for the knife, he should have reloaded. Yes, he could. He, Tyler still would have died at the end, but uh, you hear Gino saying, "It's fine, it's fine." I'm going off at this point. I'm like, "You are fucking selfish. Like, why would you do that?" And, and then Gino is kind of defending snaking here. So I'm realizing I'm losing my team here. And I'm feeling... I, I was also very cocky back in this day. So I realize that I'm losing my team here. And I, get, I start to get worried. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't want to go this way. Fuck that. Post office. Someone called out. He's mail. Yeah. Yeah. It's at the post office. Oh, dude, I got traded. He's going on the flank. Oh! Water, 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 water. Yeah, I said it too late. He's on the flank. Yeah, dude. Oh, he's laying. What? Oh, that was a clutch. That's a clutch fucking spot, dude. Holy cow. Can you get a 1v3? Oh! Oh, God. Is that last one was water? Mm -hmm. He was laying down. Look, look. Boom, boom, time! Loading. Oh. Last one. Look in the corner, dude. I have the bomb out. <sighs> the bomb has been planted! Try reload. Fuck, right, yeah. Get out of here, <laughs> so in that round, you guys hear a couple concern and notice a couple concerning things. So you hear, you watch my, my play style. I'm rushing around with an AR. This is competitive. You can't do that. So then you hear Gino. Or you, well, first of all, you see me nade male. And you hear Gino say, like, you didn't call that out soon enough. And I hit Gino. I damaged Gino. I almost called Gino to die. So, again, the trust is not working, you know. The communication is not there. Gino and I always usually knew our, each other's moves, and uh, that's not happening this game. 
So, and then the other thing is they say he's flanking. Well, I don't even change my where I'm looking. I stay looking mid, and I get killed from fence. And then Gino's left in a 1v3 again. Gino clutches up and saves us the tournament. And here's the famous round. <laughs> We're going to watch this together. What was he trying to do? Probably go around for long flank. flank. Yeah, go around our flank. Yeah. You're lucky, that was a hey, we got to win this now. Let's go. Hey, let's go to a bomb. Let's all go to a bomb. Oh, yeah. So Snaking and I are finally on the same page. We say, let's all go to a bomb. So we stack bomb, but he bumps me off bomb, even though I you hear, I think Gino said it. Oh, you called out for it. I wanted, I wanted to take bomb. Anyway, my play was always take bomb and go to go prone here and do American. So I do my normal play that was normally my strat. So then I usually go up and check bomb, see if anybody's camping there, and check and poke out and see if I can get anything in the back. So none of that's happening right now. We're still developing. There's my puppy. So, so Tyler gets a pick, and then Gino gets traded. Then Gino, Tyler, and Snaking all drop. They call, they give me good call-outs. I know he's coming from gate, but we have no idea where the fourth guy is. I thought I saw movement, and I look back. And there is the clutch. So what happened? Why did I get dropped? Ultimately, I got dropped because of a poor attitude and because... I was unwilling to adapt to a change in leadership, and I didn't drop the most flashy numbers. Ultimately, my teammates chose the guy that dropped the flashy numbers instead of the guy that chose strategies. So I was always the strategic player, and I never dropped big numbers. I think the most kills I ever had in a domination game was 28. I don't think I ever dropped more than 30. Um, but I always had big numbers in objectives and defense. And I always came in clutch when it counted. So they chose the strate they chose the the numbers guy instead of the strategy guy. Well, that only lasted a week. They all went to real. I got kicked. Well, I didn't really get kicked. I, they all just left and went to real, and they picked up Asinex to replace me. After a week, Asinex, which is Ty uh, Colin, Tyler, and Gino all come to me and they say, "Hey, we want you back. We need strategies." Turns out that after that week, they hadn't won a single game since this game. So we won the tournament, and they, the my replacement and this team that had just won a tournament of 128 people didn't win a single game because they didn't have strategies. So at the end of the day, I ended up winning, but it was a very frustrating week when trying to figure out if I had a future in competitive Call of Duty or not. Um, I... Got dropped after probably the best play of my career, and it was very frustrating. So, um, yeah, so that's the story of how I got dropped after my best play of my career. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, be asking for below. As always, guys, we're Crazy HD. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the ride. See you guys next time.